Third seed Maryland Terrapins 25 and 9. And the UCLA Bruins have won their last seven in succession. That turned around a season during which they had lost the previous six out of seven. And Jason Capono with the white headband from the get go helped lead the way. Here's Capono number 24. And Vern Lundquist. Merlin was man to man. Capono is guarded by Danny Miller. Miller is their best perimeter defender. Ankle injury sustained a week ago against Duke. He missed it. the first game the other night. Moiso gets the first basket. UCLA's up 2 0. Watson pressuring Blake, who's been pretty sound with the basketball. Good decisions. Terrence Morris looks inside. Now Stephen Blake, the freshman from Miami. Miller, pump fake, takes a little runner short with the shot. And it comes down in the hands of Billy Knight. And he's been making that shot in the lane, that bad ankle. We'll keep a look at it, see if he's as mobile. He's got Capono, who he measures up to, size-wise. Capono, the freshman, now here at the high post. Moiso gets the return pass from Earl Watson up and under. He's got the basket, and he will shoot a free throw. Well, take your pick here. It's either Baxter or Morris. And it's going to be Baxter, but twice now, pretty simple. They go in, the scrape comes a little bit late, the grab by Lonnie Baxter. And it's going to have to be a front, or you may see a quick switch to the man-to-man -man into a zone type of coverage. Well, we saw a 60% free throw shooter on the season. Tipped by Juan Dixon, who also got an elbow in the eye, but he puts it in the hands of Stephen Blake. Tough Entry pass denied by Jerome Moiso. Great job. And here comes Watson, UCLA. Goes to the half court set. Watson backs it out. And what Gary Williams wants UCLA to run their action, force them to play a lot of half court. Don't get the leak outs. Steve Lavin's going to Dan Gadzurich very early on. He's getting ready to come in the game. And Scott Farnham's praying for no stoppage. There's Knight. And the rebound in the hands of Lonnie Baxter, first team All ACC this year. And here's another one, Juan Dixon, first team All ACC. Oh, what a rebound! Baxter, nope. The tip from Morris is not there, and Moiso gets a second. And they want to attack the inside people of UCLA. Watson, yes! Oh, Dixon backed off. He loves to freeze you and knock it down. And Gary Williams, in mid-game form, as he calls that timeout, he wants to get him organized. And Armin, and right. I, I spoke to the assistants of Maryland, and I told them what you had mentioned and just reported. They don't buy into that. <laughs> 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 they think he's still as aggressive. <laughs> he certainly was aggressive when he called the timeout and got in the face of one of his stars, Lonnie Baxter. Baxter gets that uh, bucket, and it's 7-2. Here's Dan Gadzurek, the 6-11. Postman who, uh, as Capono misses the shot, and Juan Dixon tries to knife through. Watson goes to the floor. No call. Here's Moiso. Danny Miller bumps into a man. Capono spots up the three, and that is a sure shot. It sure is automatic. Say they get it right to him as well. Danny Miller not able to react. But two good looks. And Jason Capono has just set a new single season record for three point shots made. That's his 79th of the year, and he breaks a spotty head tied with Tracy Murray. And right now you can see that baseline bump. It causes some problems, and then Dixon loves to sneak to the foul line where he breaks you down with it. There's a screen on the baseline and the fill on the foul line. Danny Miller. Stephen Blake goes out. Puts up a little runner. Nope. Rebound, Gadzurik. And Merlin reacts beautifully, getting back. Watch it under control. This is some team. They get it to the right spots. Capono looks inside for Moiso, guarded by Terrence Morris. Now here's Billy Knight. Blake goes for the steal, gets it. Pretty nice play. touch pass, Juan Dixon. Here's Blake. Oh, oh. Foul. No. no Clean block. Watson, what timing at the other end. Oh, is he on fire? What a reaction. But that was an automatic deuce for Blake, but you just saw the reaction of Earl Watson. And how about the counter with the pass to Moiso? And Reggie Greenwood well, has got, called time. No, he's got a little blood under his eye, Earl Wilson. Or Earl Watson. Um, uh, just the reaction, the cut. Touch pass. Now, this looks automatic. And watch the reaction by Watson. Just magnificent. The open floor save, and he and... The Moiso finished, but then he and Blake started woofing to one another. So I don't know, maybe on that 
that dive to the floor, he got cut. So because of the cut, Watson takes a seat on the bench. And Ryan Bailey comes on. Bailey started a number of games late season at the point guard. Watson then moved to number two. Here's Baxter. And he's on the line. So look at that, Earl. And he's talking right now to Steve Blake. He's not happy. He felt maybe he got a little flying arm. Could have been on that layup as well. Maryland off to a very slow start. One of seven from the field. Here's Bailey. And Billy Knight, left side, Capono. Kicks it back outside, get Zurich, yes. Wow, nice kick, and how about the space out by Dan got Zurich? How about the start for UCLA? Well, they are been solid, running their half court, getting it in deep, and they got the one thing that Gary Rubin was concerned about, the lob by Watson. That one tipped by Moiso, saved by Blake. And the touch into the corner, Terrence Morris as Gadzurik flies at him. That's for three. Oh, he's playing within himself. The spread, they've got good shooting on the perimeter with Dixon and Morris. Morris, the All-American a year ago. Many said he didn't have that kind of a season this year around. Gary Williams said it's just the other guys on this team have elevated their games. This is like too easy right there, the way they got that shot off. The guard around by Capona. All right, Armin, we have tried to determine where the cut... Uh, took place probably right there, Bill. It may have been as Earl Watson reached in. And he's so important to this team. Solid performer, makes the right decisions. They are a tough, nice post pass by Miller. The finish. Danny Miller finds Ronnie Baxter, and that cuts the lead to 7, 14-7. Now Ryan Moose Bailey, who, uh, as we said, started a number of games late season at the point. He's just got to be basic. Don't do anything nice little slip there by Gazor. Jerron Rush has made his first appearance in the ball game, number four. Came back, of course, famously so after his suspension from the NCAA was rescinded. And the start in the win over Stanford. Here's Bailey off the glass for two minutes. They kept moving, used the bump on the foul line to free himself. They are very well organized early. Solid approach. The matchup continues along the baseline. Jerron Rush goes for the steal. Miller gets it back. UCLA, seven of ten from the field to start. And Steve Lavin calls this defense the quicksand. And they follow colors on occasion. Here's Morris in the lane, a little soft left-handed hook. Always within himself. Whatever he has to do to help his team win. Five points for Terrence Morris. Now here's Moiso with Gad Zurich. And Capono up front. Bailey. What a gamble here. They leave Rush alone. It works. Miller helped out. Baxter. Here's Morris, pulls up, takes the two, got it. Uh, they weathered the early hit, and now they've got their legs. UCLA jumped off, and Blake follows Bailey. Well, important to note the time and the score when Earl Watson went to the bench, and Watson is getting ready to come back. And Rush there didn't make the effort to Moiso on the pass. A big problem when Watson was out, they couldn't get the blood off his pants, the scrubbing, because you, you can't have it saturated. It's one of the rules. Earl Watson back on the floor. Ryan Bailey takes a seat. And Taj Holden has come in from Maryland, the freshman who started the other night in their victory in the first round. They got to communicate in this matchup. They exchange people, follow a man to a certain point. There's the pinch by Watson. And now the switch again. Back on, back on. And Blake will come back and reload. 12.52 to go, first half of play. Blake guarded by Watson. Tough shot. Yes, it was. Gets it back, puts it up. No. Kip, no. Offensive board, Blake, no. Baxter, foul. A lot of opportunities could have Blake a little bit frustrated. Steve in amongst the big fellas. That's the one thing about this defense. You can beat the UCLA matchup defense, but the problem is the big guys in the back able to block shots, hurries, changes. Some unusual deliveries occur with Katsurik and Moiso on the baseline. Lonnie Baxter has uh, had a breakthrough year. He became first team all ACC. This team started out 0-3 in conference play. They fell to 2-4, lost a game at North Carolina. They were scheduled to play at Florida State, and Gary Williams put them through what everybody on the team acknowledges was the most significant workout of the season.
And he kept emphasizing, get it inside. Get it inside. And Lonnie Baxter scored 26 in the win over Florida State. And he had a little team meeting for that chat as well. Yes. I'll tell you another influence in his life is Dave Gabbard, who he speaks to frequently during that time. Would he just give him some advice? Dave, the former commissioner of the Big East and also Olympic coach. From the corner, Jerron Rush. His three-pointer gives UCLA a 19-13 lead. Now Drew Nicholas has come on the floor and Juan Dixon goes to the point. There's the dish to Baxter. No. Nope. Moisa for UCLA. And Merlin's plan is to attack the big people. You can see they're getting it inside nicely. Watson guarded by Nicholas now. Moisa alley you gets her. Baxter fouls him. Get complete coverage with real-time desktop scoring in the Game Center. For the fastest coverage online, just click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at our keyword CBS Sportsline. Gad Zurich mentioned the other night, uh, among his talents is not the ability to shoot free throws. Well, he's got the uh, preliminary stroke, but what they've done beautifully, the Maryland lift here. And what, what a nice little touch pass. And then got Zurich able to take it, almost get it converted. Uh, but this is something he's going to have to work on the offseason. He's an aggressive performer down on the block. And you can see the problem with the big people is Baxter gets his second. Got Zurich. Oh, for his trip to the line, but the offensive board taken by Moiso. Martisic is on now for Baxter. Mike Martisic. Moiso is showing good foot speed, too. They're trying to load him up on the block. Steps. Travel. 11.45 to go first half of play. Taj Holden gives it uh, to Steve Blake. Stephen Blake, the freshman point guard, with a couple of turnovers in the early going. Now Dixon. Or what they do is they exchange, they switch, so they get right up on Dixon out with the shot, so he's not able to get free. Here's Holden, got it for three. Oh, came off a screen of Martisic and canned the long one. Not something you'd expect. No, no, you figured he'd be down around the three-second area. Bonus points in the first eight minutes. And Capona pretty good at the post up there. You can use the feet there. Travel. Dixon recovering. They got a little scrape down by Morris. Right, Gary Williams. He was talking uh, with us yesterday and uh, on the cafe and reflected on how his demeanor has changed. One of the things he talked about was going to attend the birth of his first grandchild back on November 15th. His daughter Kristen gave birth. And he had a game two nights later. He said 10 years ago, I'd have never done that. <laughs> he would have waited until after the season That's to see right. the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Blake, foul is called on Watson. And Kristen Scott. Here for the game tonight. The grandchild born November 15th, David Jeffrey Scott. It's nice to see Gary smile during the season. It's an unusual occurrence. And Steve Blake with that penetration, very feisty, taking it at Earl Watson, not backing off. Holden tries to set the screen. They get it into Martisic. Oh, dear. And he got to wait and let him come get it. And that's what pressure will do. Overreact. And he loves, that's the, his favorite guy to pick on, incidentally, just from watching some tape. <laughs> He's a uh, little Mike. He's going to get cotton in his ears. There's Watson. Not there. Over the top. It'll be Maryland's ball. 10.32 to go in the first half of play. And Syracuse with a... Excellent win there. Michigan State tested by Utah. Pretty look. Foul on the baseline. And Vern Dixon with a nice little curl. Got the catch. And a lot of guys would have taken that shot. Found somebody in a better spot. Ray Young, who's on the floor number 34, gets called for that one. Matt Barnes, who was also out, will get a rest. Moisa Watson. Here's Dixon for three, yes. And what a breakdown defensively. You know he can shoot it. Nobody covered. And the Maryland Terrapins down 14 to two have come back from that 12 point deficit. We're tied at 19. Didn't take them long. No, very solid. This end picked up. Rush. 
Nice move by Taj Holden, but Jerron Rush gets it back. The dish to get Zurich, and he will go back to the free throw line. And what a nice look. Interior passing, excellent by Rush there. Marisic giving it up at the end, but Gadzura getting himself in position to dominate. A very feisty play by UCLA. Well, how, how, uh, how sad is UCLA at the free throw line the other night? They hit 46% from the field in their win and 44% from the free throw line. That's devastating, particularly in the NCAA. Around 58% is the team, and as noted, Dan struggled under 40. There you go, yes. big fella. What a stroke. <laughs> Steve with positive reinforcement there. We set him up. Uh, and it, his dad goes crazy on the missed free throws, like all old timers. He doesn't understand why he can't make a cap and Mary here and join the games as well. On the dad. Cap and Mary Lavin, Steve's parents have uh, made the trip back to Minneapolis. Now Danny Miller comes on. Terrence Morris is going to get a rest. So let's set the lineup for you for Maryland. Taj Holden, Mike Martisich, Danny Miller, Juan Dixon, and with the ball, Stephen Blake, the freshman point guard. Twenty-one, nineteen. Blake kicks it out after the penetration. A little different offensive look right now. Dixon blocked by Gadzurek. Right, a little 2-1-2 two, two set. Good react. Here he goes again. Wow. Oh! Earl Watson may be as good as I've seen since Bobby Hurley at delivered it up Duke around the rim. And how about the body adjustment? Call the chiropractor, Burn to run rush. Oh. When it works, it's a sight to behold. That was Watson to rush. Well, Dodge Holden. We'll enjoy it when it does work. <laughs> Rebound, UCLA, Jerron Rush. Watson pulls up. Well, we were chatting with Jerron Rush last night about the uh, moves they and here's in the lane is Young. He may have gotten away with one. Watson and Rush first played together as teammates in the sixth grade in Kansas City. You think they know one another? Nice. How did they get that? Uh, beauty. How about Juan Dixon. Not an easy pass either, and Dixon made the most of it. If he came down, he would have gotten the shot off. Now Watson. 25 on 25. Looks inside for Gadzurik. Off the glass. Got it. He has really Gadzurik. come along offensively. I happen to see him in high school in the McDonald's All-American game. A little turnaround. Jumper with a kiss. And they are getting it too easily on the box. Blake, left side. Long jumper. Got it. Juan oh. Dixon. Tell you, there wasn't much room either. Pretty good reaction by Young. Little nylon. Two three-pointers now, eight points in all for Dixon. We're under eight minutes, a 27-24 game. There's Moiso on the floor. Knocked away by Taj Holden. Got to protect the ball in there. Six UCLA turnovers. They, they really throw some great passes. Fortunate they get that one back by Martisic. That one's off the rim, and Gadzurek loses it out of bounds off his thigh. And after the early hit, now it's basics. First half Thursday night in their win over Ball State, they were stuck at 22 at the halftime. Here's Dixon. So good. Setting this guy up and finding a hole. Mauricio from Capono gets it back, wide open, Miller late getting there. And you wonder, that's just a little flare screen, not a good reaction defensively by Miller. Again, the foot, a major problem in coverage. Blake is guarded by Watson, Danny Miller, Capono has him defensively. Now Blake on the baseline. There's a switch with Matt Barnes. Juan Dixon. Underneath the Morris, the trap from Watson, he got the turnover. And here comes Watson running out. He's got Barnes left. Dishes to Mauricio, beautiful. How about that for finding the trailer? He's got a great feel and it's in development. Earl Watson understands and being a shooting mentality all of his life, and now running the show. Already with six assists, and there's a foul called on Ray Young. Now you figure that there's no fast break because Merlin got back, but you all have to get back. Moiso running the floor in position here. Everybody's got a man. Well, 
uh, Mars unable to find and tag. Martisic unable to find, but the reaction just great by the big fella. In that uh, significant win at Stanford, Earl Watson with 13 assists. He came on with 12 assists in the win Thursday night. And six already here. Now Dixon guarded by Capono momentarily into the corner for Blake. Jumper for three. Got it. And that's where they confused the matchup. Earl Watson stayed on top, did not follow. Blake to the corner. 32-29 Bruins. And Watson has it again. Javon Rush. What a screen by Capona. Quick pass inside Watson. Now he's got seven assists. How about the ability to lighten it up? Good screen and Barnes with the ability to finish. Matt Barnes, a sophomore. This is a very deep UCLA team. Steve Lavin has started 10 different players over the course of the 31 games played thus far. Well, if you're a good scorer, you got to move without the ball. We've seen Dixon get himself free. How about Capone with the back cut now? The screen, he doesn't get the pass, but staying alive sets the roadblock up, and it's very easy. And Mars gets over there late. Dixon couldn't help or chuck. You've got to get an arm on the cutter. Terrence Morris shoots two. Well, Terrence Morris likes his uh, double doubles in the NCAA. He's at three. Working on another Bad performance versus Iona. At 22 points and 12 rebounds in that win over Iona. And of the four first-round games played here in Minneapolis, there's time called by UCLA. Matt Barnes, Earl Watson, Jerron Rush, Capono, and Gadzurik on the floor for UCLA. And Merlin with the trap caused the timeout that time. They ragged full court. Now Watson and Blake. One four set now. A little slip by Barnes. Barnes pops out. Goes left side, rush for three, in and out, tip, got it. I don't know, I think it may have been Barnes again. And the Zurich there as well. And each side rebounded. Basket given to Barnes. Taj holding on. Here's Dixon, pump fake, gets by. Oh boy, there was Gad Zurich, whose presence forced Dixon into a trouble. Now, that's what that defense does. They, the match confuses you a little bit, but here weak side rebound and the soft touch of rush too. Enables guys to get in position to tip it. But once you play this matchup, they're exchanging people, they call it bumps. Once in a while they take cutters, they confuse themselves on occasion. 36-31. Up and under Gadzurek. How about that? The mobility, the dexterity. You come up on him, putting it on the floor. Back to a seven point margin for UCLA. And Ben Sport points 21 to three. Blake looks inside, finds Taj Holden. Rebound, get Zurich again. It's funny, you watch these, this club and tape, occasionally they just play with the one big guy and it looks more efficient. When the two of them are in, occasionally they get in one another's way, but they present such a problem defensively, it's tough to keep them out. Out of here. And a little brush screen on the foul line and pointing all over the Duke of Earl as Watson just lighted it up with looks. A little extended floor here to confuse Merlin. Stephen Blake, Lonnie Baxter back on playing with two fouls. He and Terrence Morris. Danny Miller and Juan Dixon. So the starting five for Maryland. Baxter calls for it. The double comes from Watson, mm, and, and he forced the turnover. Great rotation by Capona. And he at the other end. No. Watson can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, you just shoot it. Dixon. They got a foul. Got yep. away with one, maybe. Capono got away with the slap. Three on three. This to Capono. Take the three. That's what he does best. And what a delay and a fine by Watson. I mean, they just punish you. Get back. They have a counter. Blake, Pretty nice good. pass to Baxter, who did not appear ready for it. Now he's got it. No nope. rush. Mm. Those are the ones you got to make. 
2.52 to go before the break. 40-31, Capono. Capono really stretches your defense. They've got to come way to the sideline to guard him. Watson back outside, looks for Gab Zurich. Jason Capone looks like he's strolling on the beach out there. Just very relaxed. Yeah, Zurich! Goodness. A little Aren't jump right hook there, there, kiss. There. I mean, so many answers with this team. Four of four for Dan Gadzurek. Dangerous because they come in relaxed. Nothing expected of UCLA. Good step for him. Up and under. And Terrence Morris Terrence gets it. Morris. Yeah, the Bruins had that eight and two start this year. Then they went through the stretch five and nine. And Vern, Steve Lavin, he's reached 75 wins. He's 90 and 37 faster than any other UCLA coach. That includes John Wooden. Of course, he's a coach's son. And I got a kick I'm talking about his dad. His dad was more worried about no hot showers the day of game, no milk products, old time kind of, a, of an influence. And his dad's a Hall of Famer up in San Francisco, the Bay Area. He played for Pete Newell and Phil Wolpert. Yeah, pretty good company, former San Francisco coaches, and of course, Pete at Cal as well. Here we come left side to Ron Rush. Under two to go, Ryan Bailey is back on the floor now, giving uh, Earl Watson a breather. Barnes, Moiso, they are deep, Bill, aren't they? Skip pass, Bailey. Ryan Bailey, who uh, played at Penn State, but prior to going to Penn State, made a recruiting trip to Maryland. Up. Barnes, no. Shot clock was at two. Well, they need a good defensive stop, Merlin. Oh, my goodness. Just off their game here. Here's Watson back on the floor now. 42-33 UCLA. Sitting at 13 and 11 at one point in the season. And they've come back and won their last seven with shots like that. And that's too easy. The little slide to the box, nobody deterred. You got to force them away. Jerome Moiso with 10 points, 44 33, an 11 point lead. Back to double digits now for UCLA. They jumped out 14 to 2. Maryland came back and tied it at 19 all, but here's another Maryland turnover, Lonnie Baxter. Well, Maryland's had problems on the offensive end against the matchup defense. It's been a little confusing, some errant passes, but more importantly, at point, Earl Watson has won the offense in the half court. He's made some lightning strikes the length of the floor, and I guess most importantly, Vern, here's another on the oop. Sent it in! Oh, my good, Jerron. I hope you don't get hurt. Imagine his vertebrae in the morning, the way he twists. But they've been able to execute, particularly in the box area, very well. UCLA taking advantage of their big people. 11 assists for Earl Watson in the first half. And a steal. And here we go, three on two. Kicks it left side. Young. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. And how about the presentation? Boot plate special. Earl Watson on time. Oh. They'll just lock and load. Dixon counters at the other end. The tip is no good. A dream first half for Earl Watson. 12 assists in the first half. And no turnovers. Wow, value in it. That's so key. They continue the matchup. And Blake has to get back to being sound, make good decisions. And here they go. Real struggle. That's number 12. Yep. Gad Zurich into the hands of Watson. The NCAA tournament record is 18 assists, established by Mark Wade in 1987 in a UNLV win over Indiana. The school record, if you want to just file that one away from UCLA, is 15, set by Derek Martin in 1991. And nice double up on the post. First good sequence Merlin has had on the defensive end. Juan Dixon, now Stephen Blake. Good Morris, kick. nice pass. Lonnie Baxter fouled to go to the line. <laughs> Gary up along the sideline. He wanted Baxter to go to the rim and knock it down. They're trying to establish an inside game. They thought they could attack UCLA inside. They weren't able to. They turned it over, rushed some shots, or weren't able to finish. Gary Williams in his 11th season as the head coach at his alma mater. Baxter gets uh, misses the first. He'll get another one. Told us Thursday his aspirations for the beginning of the year were a 500 record. Realistically, they lost four starters 
last year. And you said to him, you mean in ACC play? And he said, no, for the season. Oh, my goodness. Well, if, if he had a bad season, get the straight jacket. Yep. He gets a little excited on that sideline. Seven straight NCAAs, eight in 11 years. I mean, it's just a magnificent job for the Terps. But now they're struggling. They've been down by 12 this year at home, Vern, against North Carolina State and one. Uh, to 16 to start this half. Dixon. Uh, this is not the start that Gary Williams envisioned when he spoke with Armand. Watson pulls up. That's the kind of start that Watson hoped for. I love him because he loves to stick it in. A little dagger there. That's the second time the defense just stayed, didn't get the hand up. He freezes him and nails it. Watson's free gives Maryland a 19-point deficit, deficit from which they uh, must climb back. Here's Miller. Stephen Blake with Capono on him and no one there for the pass. And that's a tough little delivery so close as Blake got there, and that's what they do. Big guys present. Watson. Oh, and Morris Lumen. What a ball game for UCLA. With 18.30 to go, Earl Watson decides to go the offensive way uh, with made baskets in this half. Oh, is he's just outstanding. Well, Bob Fossey, big time choreographer, matched. Right now, as once he's able to lead this club, get him in the right spots, and occasionally stick the deep one. Juan Dixon's shot will not go. The follow is good. Look at this strike again. Oh, they're not getting back. Young that time. And UCLA looks like they have young legs. And Merlin stuck a little bit, recovering. Blake. Too strong. Tipped into the hands of Gadzuric. He actually put that last basket in for Maryland. It was given to Baxter. Young back into the hands of Watson. Doing a better job prying and kicking it out if they don't have anything. Ali Ali oh, wait. That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> He's supposed to make the pass. Oh. And Vern, as you look at Merlin, to my knowledge, I don't know of anybody in the ACC that plays the matchup this extended period. They may play it on occasion. And this has been very confusing for them. Nicholas in the game now, good shooter, trying to get something going. Marsh jump shot from the corner. They're getting one and done at this point. Now, nothing is working for Maryland. Here's Capono. Watson, left side. Oh, is he feeling it? Oh, and they're getting it to him. This is a well-oiled group. So comfortable coming in. The expectations levels weren't as in the past. Watson three for three from three-point range in this half. 62-35 again. Oh, oh, oh. oh, my goodness. Gary Williams with another timeout. 30-point lead now for UCLA, fueled by this brilliant display from Earl Watson. He's hit his last four three-point shots. 17 points and 13 assists. Uh, he's averaged 12 points the last seven games. So stepping it up, but just magnificent in his overview for his team. His presentation, the highest level. Oh my, just the force and things that you wouldn't see Marlon doing. They're not the same team that got him there. Everything has been a struggle. Foul is on Gad Zurich. Steve Lavin's going to go to his bench and bring in Matt Barnes, and uh, Stephen Blake is going to come on momentarily for the Maryland Terrapins. Baxter gets the first. Now we've talked, Bill, about how young this Maryland team is, and all of a sudden they look at mm, They sure do. We came in rattled. And, Vern, looking at some things, in 1997, they were down 22 at North Carolina. And they won by 10. And it's a different set of circumstances. This team, UCLA, and they get a little double up jump ball, possession arrow going as everything else has been. UCLA's way. Right, Hill ball, UCLA. 65 36, 16 26 to go. Extend on the floor. They've got to create as many possibilities to score quickly as they can, Marlon. Trap in the backcourt on Watson. The foul is going to be called on Juan Dixon. His first. Call number three, Juan Dixon, his first, team first. 
first team foul of this half. Uh, Earl Watson always looking around. Oh my goodness, not a good look that time by Matt Barnes. Yeah, very poor inbound pass yeah, stolen by Stephen Blake. Yeah. What had happened, Watson was looking around for a nice double again. They almost caused a walk. Young gets it to Capono. And here comes Baxter back. Capono mm. off the glass. That's 10 shots in succession for UCLA. Oh, devastating. And how about the ball fake at the end there? And Capono is going to pick up this foul. Nothing's going to happen quickly for Merlin. It's going to be a difficult task to overcome point wise, but they've got to be solid in their approach. Get themselves good shots, chip away as best they can. A little baseline screen here. Blake can't get it to go. Moiso clears it for UCLA. Now Watson. Right side, Capono for three. 11 in a row. Right? 11 shots in a row. Oh. And an assist for Earl Watson. He now has 14. That is a new single season mark for him. He's one away from tying the school record. Oh, look at this slip pass, and they don't convert. Boy, is that typical of the night? Nice extra look again by Blake. Blake fouled as Baxter goes up and Moiso gets him. Blake, we've seen during the course of the year, Steve on the money with passes, taking good shots. Not comfortable when he came out, but here's the extra look. Getting the big guy in the pill. And this is the second opportunity for Lonnie Baxter, but it has been a struggle to get touches. 30 point game. And Baxter shoots one. Shocking burn. Really yes. stunning. Yeah. I thought this one would be a close one to the end. UCLA ripping through Maryland 70 41 in the proudest pair in the stands. That is Estella Watson to the left with the UCLA jersey on. And there is Earl's dad to the right. Earl Watson right there. We got to improve your circling ability. Yeah. Well, that's, I did. That, that's really, that's really poor. Uh, it's not a baseline screen or bump. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to circle the whole person. Oh. Well, they've, they've got to stay in their seat if they want to be circled properly. <laughs> Here's Capono. On the curl, Jerron Rush. And he is fouled. Can I do it again? Yeah, we'll give you one more See chance. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Okay. All right, now, now we're going to go there. There you are. That's good. There. Is that a little better? Okay. Earl and Estella Watson. Don't want to offend anybody in Kansas City. <laughs> Never. Here's Watson, guarded by Stephen Blake. Kansas City, Missouri, his hometown, as it is Jerron Rush. Jerron Rush, and here's a Jerron Rush going for the ball and fouled by Drew Nicholas. Did you see the speed to the ball? Yep. Steve Blake thought he had a breakaway with pretty good defense. Jerron Rush. Second. After it, well, they have just done everything extremely well. Sort of a confidence building with this team. Do you think maybe the Cal game is the start of it? Well, they were down 19 to Cal. Here's the alley oh, I missed it. Down 19 to Cal and a foul in the backcourt with a 13. They had won at Oregon and Oregon State. Mm -hmm. Facing Cal, they came back and won that game. Then they went to Stanford and won that. And uh, they just haven't slowed down, although they looked a little erratic in the game here against Ball State the other night. Well, it, it's the kind of team, there's so much fun to watch, and they can do so many things around the rim in an extraordinary fashion. But I just think Watson has to get the pulse and feel and don't do the silly things. Or the gen, nice and high low here, they get it down inside. Don't do the flare things if it's not called for. And it's, it's like showbiz sometimes, but Back it off and be solid. In, tip, in situations where you got to get it in low, or you got to run your set, or you got to get a specific guy involved. This is uh, his ball game the other night. You can see the struggle occasionally with a, a bad judgment. And, you know, the growth of this program under Steve, he's young, first head coaching opportunity, have been assistant to Harrick. But the lineage of father, and Katie, and others, Mike Krzyzewski, a little bit of an influence with him, too. And as they grow, I mean, this season now, maybe this is the turn for them. Gene Katie, whose Purdue team won earlier today. And uh, Steve Lavin was an assistant to Jim Herrick. Jim Herrick dismissed as the head coach at UCLA, and Lavin made the interim coach at the age of 31. Then uh, given a six-year rollover contract 
that goes through the 2004 and 5 season. Now 35 years of age. Into the lane, Dixon. And a block from Moiso. And that's what they do with this matchup. They feed you, funnel you to the big people. Here's another one. And that's one if it's a close game. Yep. You got to stay away. That's where they occasionally get in trouble. All flare occasionally, it's extinguished. Dixon. At the. Uh, Reaches Jerron Rush and Gadzuri clears this one for UCLA. Well, they just can't make shots now. What typically would go down for Maryland emotionally, they're not themselves, and therefore the results aren't favorable. 30 point game. Moiso, nope. They're just running their stuff. And you can see, not the defense. As Gary Williams turns to his staff. Billy Hahn, Dave Dickerson, Jimmy Pat Sosa, trying to find some answers. So difficult. Goaltending called on Terrence Morris. I uh, beg your pardon. Yes, it was on Morris. 73 41. Nice double up, a little slip by Dixon. Eyes holding. Right side for Stephen Blake. Blake, nope. Knocked out of bounds, touch last by UCLA. And Danny Miller will inbound. Earl Watson's 15 assists tonight ties a UCLA record. Set by Derek Martin in 1991. Mm. A lofty total. He's been solid defensively. He keys the top of this matchup. It's almost shrugging the shoulders right now by Merlin. Not into it. Favorable things happening. Gonzaga giving St. John's everything they want in a game that is tied. Here's a foul on Taj Holden, and that's his second. I'm sure as people see that score around the country, just stunned, I would think, UCLA over Merlin. Oh, been sound all game long. Great preparation. Took it to Gary's team early. Steve's preparation. Extraordinary. Ties Holden leaves. Lonnie Baxter back on the floor. Billy Knight and Ryan Bailey on the floor now. Matt Barnes as well. That's for three, and it's good. Oh, that's his game. Billy Knight, great stroke. Billy, say goodnight with those deep. <laughs> 76-41. UCLA is 11 of 16, Bill, from three-point range. And, and the sad thing in the NCAA, if there is one thing, it's that people, you forget what you've accomplished all year when you lose in the NCAA, much less this, the next week will be tough. On the coaches in particular, players will bounce back a little easier. And you expect a high level of play, and you don't get it. It's terribly disappointing. Jerome, Gonzaga and St. John's fighting uh, out west for a chance to go to Albuquerque. Purdue knocked off Oklahoma, the third seed in the first game there in Tucson, and Gonzaga and St. John's having at each other. The winner here, of course, goes into Auburn Hills, Michigan next week and takes on Iowa State. And they will join Your Michigan State and Syracuse and in uh, the Midwest. Number 22, Rico Hines. Rico Hines is on. Excuse me, Bill. Apparently they've rotated their talent extremely well, too. A nice blend. If one thing I've gleaned, at least in watching as we came in here, when they have one big guy on the floor, this is an awfully tough team. They, they, they've got a lot of mobility. Guys can beat you a lot of ways. They all can run the floor. Yeah. The problem on occasion is when you have the matchup with the two back there, they're tougher defensively because as people get into the middle, you've got support on the block. Hines, Rico Hines, one of the tri-captains of this team. That one uh, out of bounds. 12-16 to go in this one. Gonzaga leading St. John's 56-54. And uh, a little less than eight minutes to go in that one. Nicholas, right side. Finally get the flex to work that I got Dixon for the box. They get it right here. Baxter gets the foul. I mean, that's just the frustration. You make the shot, there isn't the a foul. It has been a monumental task. Earl Watson banging out the assists with regularity. Ryan Bailey. Breaks through and kicks it left side. Billy Knight 
And they'll go into the half court set. 11.50 to go in the ball game. Here's Gad Zurich in and out. Rebound. Billy Knight fouled. He'll go to the free throw line. And as you look at that uh, potential record breaking assist by Earl Watson, if they're going to do it, that is get him back in. I would do it right away. Uh, don't. Steve's been around a lot of accomplished people. The idea is you don't want to rub it in. And then the other end is you want to get Ryan Bailey as much playing time as you can. Yes. Uh, get him comfortable. Dixon off the curl gets two. Go. And that's his little ability to shed his defender. Nice little turn in the lane. Pretty aggressive trap right here. Jerron Rush is going to come back on the floor now for Steve Lavin. And Drew Nicholas will come on for Gary Williams and the Maryland Terrapins. Nicholas on. Martisich will uh, get a rest. And Billy Knight sits down for UCLA. Barnes finds Gad Zurich. And now here's Ryan Bailey. But they haven't done much wrong. You see you got Zurich help here as they get the quick open look. Rush just on the floor. The piston ready. Kick it in the corner. Drew Nicholas takes the shot. Mm. Fires for three and gets it. And that's his game. Drew Nicholas for three. 77-48. Ryan Bailey. If you're Merlin, you want to rush, force them to take the quick hitter. Bailey, no. Gat Zurich, yes. A little discard there as well. Yes. A five backs there on Gajuri. You know, Gajuri, he loaded up in the lane, and Baxter really didn't fight him for position. I mean, this, that's what you you got to reach back a little bit. Gajuri with 13 points in a non-starting role. Rico Hines. How about the numbers here, Vern? Take your pick. Who do you want? Take Barnes that time. Wow. 81-48, extraordinary. Uh, Steve and his staff, Michael Houghton, Jim Say, and Steve Spencer, they got to be as shocked as we are, I think, expecting such a tough encounter. Nice hold off there by Lonnie Baxter. Lonnie Baxter. Baxter gets two. He's got 16 in the ball game. Here's Barnes. Well, an amazing season for UCLA, Bill. At that 13-11 spot, uh, the Doomsayers were having their way in Los Angeles about this team. And I must tell you, I, I just shocked that they made this kind of a turn. And, and, and you had mentioned earlier the most rewarding year Steve Lavin felt, like the way he had different ups and downs during the course of the year. Big East is undefeated so far. Big Ten eight and one. Wisconsin into the Sweet 16. Which would surprise a lot of people. I'm sure. Loot, most of all, when you think of it. Loot Olsen at Arizona. A lot of people expected him to make a run. 81.50 here, 9.41 to go. Rico Hines at the line. Hines is shooting three shots. Gary Williams was uh, talking yesterday about. The enjoyment he gets out of coaching. Nice. Not tonight. Except <laughs> I, 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 I had sorry. a comma there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I had a comma there. Good. I jumped on your thought. <laughs> Except for nights like tonight. Now, when he was a young head coach at Boston College, he used to roam the sidelines before they had a coaching box. And Jim Beheim tells a story. He didn't know Gary that well. They become fast friends. And all of a sudden, he's coaching at his Syracuse bench, and there's a man next to him tipping him on the shoulder, saying, can you believe that call? He <laughs> said, can you believe that? He said, Gary, once you go down there and coach your team, I have enough trouble with my own. Uh, but uh, the box has inhibited uh, the roaming. 84-59, to go. Gonzaga continues to lead St. John's out west. Here, it's going to be UCLA facing Kentucky, Iowa Kentucky. State. <laughs> Jerome Moiso. Now you can just see the recovery, uh, the emotion, uh, lacking totally. I mean, have you been in Gary Williams' spot? I mean, it's the toughest situation. You, you club just not doing the things you're accustomed to. You're decimated. 
Rejected Ooh. by Moiso. How about that? Is that a uh, Gary wants a technical over there? They're gonna make him stay. Well, he's gonna fight to the end. But the ability to make the extra pass so prevalent during the course of the night. Moiso on fire and defensively a beautiful presentation. And here he is almost picking up the charge, Vern. He has been terrific. Watson. He's gonna come back into the half court set. Everybody wanted the alley oop again. You can hear the murmurs in the crowd. It's on the floor, three on two. Miller, spin move off the glass, and he shoots a free throw. Nice play. Really talented player. Not himself with the foot injury, able to practice a little bit yesterday. A gamer. Part of the beginning of the game problems, I think Jason Capona being played by Miller, unable to get their little kiss finish and the spin. But this is just a tough, tough, you reach inside, this is painful. Danny Miller shoots one. And Earl Watson back on the floor for UCLA. And trying to get him the ball, see if he can get somebody close to the rim. Oh. Nichols goes for the steal. Watson gets it back. Jerron Rush, Moiso, Watson, Rico Hines, and Ryan Bailey on the floor. Nice boys here running their stuff. Here's the alley oop for the. Oh my goodness, how about that one? <laughs> and that's a new UCLA record. The coup de Gras. A new UCLA record. 16 assists, Earl Watson. Nicholas. Danny Miller. Danny Miller with the putback from Maryland. We've got eight minutes to go. And Ryan Bailey gets it back for UCLA. Takes it all the way. Rejected by Baxter. Nice play, Lonnie Baxter. Now you want him to keep playing. Dixon. Nope. Well, he had a pass two to Nicholas, but looking for the three. Here comes Watson again. He's two away from the NCAA record. He's also, he had a hit four threes in a row. He's killing them with shots like that. UCLA rolling 88-55 with 7.36 to go. Fueled by a near perfect game by Earl Watson. 17 points, 16 rebounds. And a zipper on turnovers, huh? None. Absolutely nada. Drew Nicholas for three, not there. Miller. That's no good. Taj Holden. Out of bounds off UCLA. Now Gary's still running stuff, trying to get them organized. Nice double screen for Nicholas. And Earl Watson comes to the bench. That might be it for him. Yeah, I think it will be. Rico Hines gets this one, number 22, 7.15 to go. Doing a nice job, Melkin here, being sound, getting in the right spots. Riso guarded by Lonnie Baxter. Trying to do a little Earl there. Shot clock violation. Just Earl Watson gets a rest. Just a magnificent game, Vern. Have you witnessed anything like that? No, I haven't. And, and you know, Billy, it was all done in the first half except that the assist work, and then he comes out and unloads four threes to start the second half. It just inflicted such pain with passing, and then, as you noted, such a solid, and he takes shots that he can make, and he doesn't, guys back off, he nails it, he doesn't try and get into traffic. Ryan Bailey, left side, Ray Young. Well, some fancied UCLA as a force to be reckoned with in this tournament. <laughs> the Legion will grow mm -hmm. after this. And especially, I think, in a year when uh, it is, it seems to be so wide open. And, and, and he, he came in as comfortable as they did. Uh, nobody, the down on them all year, as you mentioned, giving them difficulty, but they banded together. It's a real compliment to the coaching staff to get the preparation, 
the outlook and the surge at the right time of the year, reaching back in the Cal game and one of the great games of the year, the Stanford game coming through. And now they feel they got a little something going. Moiso is going to rest. Rico Hines comes out. Sean Farnham is back in the lineup with that gaudy record as a starting the starter, the only senior on this ball club, number 30. Yeah, solid 16 and 1. Now his attitude is magnificent, though, and you watch him in the workouts. He gives everything motion, somewhat of a spiritual contribution, too. Heart and soul, just loves UCLA. John Farnham, a one-time walk-on, and then he earned a scholarship. The only senior on the club, that was him, number 30. You get the feeling he's going to be very successful in life. Absolutely, you it, yes. You know, you hire him, he's going to make you look good, whoever you are. Out of bounds, Jerron Russell inbound. There's Sean Farnham. Now those, are, those are the great stories, too, Vern. Guys like that that contribute in any way they can. Barnes misses from close range, and we've got five and a half left in this one. Dixon. Everybody's scheduled to come back for Maryland. Mm. And this was a surprise to a lot of people, right. Maryland coming in second in the ACC. Now, this is not a typical Maryland performance, folks, but an extraordinary one by UCLA. 525 to go. And Juan Dixon shoots two. One more. Ryan Bailey. Oh, what a screen inside by Young. Bronze able to turn the corner. In the corner, here comes Young. And they'll work on the clock with 4.45 to go. They've been very efficient, Vern, too. And, you know, I like their attitude, the way they're handling everything. They're solid in their preparation. Hasn't gotten out of hand in any way. Right. Jerron Rush for three. Oh, boy. And that's, wow. a, that's really a well-executed play. I know Rush, the ability to fill it up, but the screen and then Barnes with the acknowledgement. Rush has 14. Terrence Morris underneath the junior, who has promised to return for his senior mm -hmm. season. And that's key. It, it, it's, he's a very talented player. Look Farnham with the screen on Morris. Dixon takes it away. Juan Dixon, a sophomore, Blake a sophomore, Lonnie Baxter a sophomore, so the promise is there for this team. Yeah, the sure are. Just a, a out of the gate, I mean, just took a blow and never, never really recovered tonight. I mean, sometimes young guys in a situation like this have that reaction. It can be devastating for a coaching staff. Juan Dixon shooting two. And uh, Steve Lavin is going to the end of his bench. Brandon Brooks, a uh, water polo goalkeeper, a freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii. Helped UCLA to the National Water Polo Championship is coming on. Number 44, he's a, a walk-on. And he's going to get his first chance to play in an NCAA tournament. Brandon Brooks. Now, that's not to say he didn't have some high school experience. He was uh, player of the year in... The state of Hawaii. And he could only dream. Uh, expecting to come out and play solid basketball. Gary Williams, guys, a disappointment. But UCLA just so much into the game from the get-go. Solid, good understanding of what they want to do to put people away. Brandon Brooks dishes to Ryan Bailey, and he gives it to Farnham. The, the bench all wanted him uh, to finish that particular play. Sean in good position to do it. LeBron Cephas, pass underneath from Dixon. Two more for Maryland. Now Brooks with the inbound. 
And uh, those of you uh, wondering about Gonzaga and St. John 76 71 with 30 seconds to go in that one. So it appears that the West here is uh, Rico Hines, mm. tri captain with a three. And that, as we mentioned the other night, one of your favorites over the years. So what's it watching? His attitude developed and always giving everything he can to make the program better. 2.55 to go, stolen by Brandon Brooks. And he gets a nice screen from Billy Knight. <laughs> oh. Well, they say he can walk on water. Absolutely. How about the job of Billy Knight screening for him and giving him a clear path? <laughs> oh, yeah. A clear path to the tin. It was a great screen, Vern. That is the best dunk by a water polo goalie I think I've ever seen. <laughs> You're going to give him a 10, huh? Ah, oh, you bet. <laughs> Ryan Bailey puts it up left hand, and Farnham, oh, they would have really come loose on the bench then. And Farnham hustling back. Look at that. And look at that. How about that effort? Uh, they don't get the basketball, but that's what he gives you. Imagine in practice when you're trying to simulate the opponent, he's going to make it. I bet he's caused them anguish, the first team, because he will not back off. Now Bailey. Two minutes to go. And a clean block, the possession arrow favoring Maryland. Oh, a relaxed UCLA Bruin bunch. They're going to Detroit. No, they're going to Auburn Hills. Calvin McCall, who is the quarterback on the Maryland football team, is on the floor for the first time tonight. And the runner from Nicholas is good. Calvin McCall, number 11, doing the defensive work here. Rico Hines tracks this one down. 133 to go. They want Farnham to shoot. <laughs> it's Billy Knight back, foul. It's like back in Pauley. Yeah, that's right. Senior night, get him involved. And there was a play on in that game trying to get Farnham a basket that impressed me so much. He was in a, Jason Capona had a shot and he gave it off just to get, in the, in, it was just like a nice feeling that they enjoy him, they like his, his company and he's a solid member of the team. St. John's trailing Gonzaga with 12 seconds to go in that one, a three-point game, 17 seconds remaining. And this one for 100. UCLA, their season high is 105 against Iona. And Matt Hahn in the game, the Billy assistant coach, associate head coach, son, who wants to be a broadcast. Let's see if he can shoot. Well, it's probably a color analyst then, not play by play. <laughs> He is the only senior on the Maryland team, is Matt Hahn. Rico Hines, 14 threes made tonight. From beginning to end, it has been near flawless. One minute to play. One minute to go. And the foul on Bailey. 103 69. Extraordinary. It's, it's just mind-boggling to see this transpire with such a solid team. There's Jason Capona playing on the wing, stretching the D. I thought they ran their offense very well. I mean, they made shots and they got the runouts. They got the knockout stuff. I think they played well within what they wanted to accomplish. Matt Hahn shoots one more. Drew Nicholas will sit down. Earl Badu is coming on for Maryland, only the fourth game in which he has uh, seen action this year. Hahn gets one of two. There you go, Matt. Make your father proud. He's in a box score, yeah, his, right? His mom's here as well. Yeah, mom Kathy. Yeah, Bill's wife Kathy, right. And there's Billy. Very respected in the industry. Hard worker, as emotional as Gary Williams, when you think of it, because he took over when Gary had pneumonia, I think in 1995. And finished two and two. In fact, beat Duke at Duke. How many people can say that, Ver? Calvin McCall misses on that one. Final 30 seconds, 35 seconds. And it's saved by Matt Hahn. Nice play. 30 seconds to go, 103.70. Calvin McCall from the corner, no. Hines, Billy Knight, they want to get Farnham the ball. 
They get him the ball. He's going to go to the line. <laughs> Boy, he ran the floor. The, I say he's all business. I mean, the fans and the bench to him and Steve Lavin applauding. You had noted the run defensively. Right. He goes both ways as hard as you can. <laughs> I think he's concerned about these free throws. 54% free throw shooter, by the way. He's got one more chance. Stay on the line. That's what happens a lot. You're a little harsh. Follow through. Go. <laughs> His buddy's giving him a little tip. Nope. And a foul called on Billy Knight. So we'll walk to the other end. 103-70. 18.1 to go. And look at the coaching going on here, huh? There's a good point. Say, run that play where I come around to shoot the three, coach. Right. Uh, Calvin is, McCall at the line. He is great without the ball, Vern. I mentioned he, he's like a day on the beach. He's a confident player, Jason Sigapona. And this, this is an interesting little run right now we're witnessing. Well, the run will continue. They have won their last eight. They go to 21 and 11. And they take on Iowa State next Thursday. And they want to give Sean yep. one more shot. Billy Knight. Here's Farnham with the jumper. Fouled. He's going to get to go to the line. <laughs> <laughs> He's mad that he got fouled. He's got to make him. An extraordinary night for the UCLA Bruins. The only senior on the team, Sean Farnham at the line. Got it! 104-70, Sean Farnham, the lone senior. He is 16-1 and one as a starter, but he's really a spark plug more than anything else. And for the last two minutes, this UCLA crowd has been willing him to get into the box score. Inspirational is what he is. Obviously well liked by his teammates and look at him right to the end sliding into second and They want to give him one more 5.2 seconds the try captain Rico Hines gets it in the hands of Billy Knight UCLA Dominating this game and an unbelievable 64% shooting night five players in double figures led by Earl Watson, 17 points and 16 assists.